Hello, my name is Caleb Denby, and this is Game Review. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're going to be looking at another game from the world number two, Fabiano Caruana. Uh, and this is a game that really interests me because it shows the terrifying uh, power of these 2800 level players. I mean, you see a lot of these top 10 players, you know, outplay the, the slightly lower rated grandmasters, the 2650s, what have you. But it's really the 2800s that, that will shock you by sometimes just playing a perfect game of chess. And it's, that's pretty much what happened this game. And so let's see how Fabiano Caruana showed his stuff uh, against Vladislav Kovalev in the Tata Steel Masters Tournament. So in this game, we saw e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, the main line of the Roy Lopez. This bishop comes to a4, knight f6, white gets castled, black plays b5, hitting this bishop, forcing it back to b3. I'm sure most of you have seen this position before. Fabi chooses bishop c5 in this case. Uh, white plays c3. Of course, white's going to expand in the center. Uh, black plays d6. White plays a4. And this is a common idea in the Roy, which I'll, I'll cover very briefly for those unfamiliar. Uh, black expands with a6 and b5, pushing this bishop back to b3, gaining some queenside space. Meanwhile, white looks to prove that b5 is a little bit of a weakness, a little overextended. And this a4 move is a very common way to do that. Uses b5 as a bit of a hook to try and open up this a file and create some, some awkwardness for the black pieces. In this case, Fabi simply defends the pawn with rook b8. White takes this moment to expand with d4 in the center. My bishop's attacked, so I move it. Uh, a takes b5, a takes b5, and here uh, white goes for the line knight a3. And the point here for black is he's actually just going to give up this pawn. And in return, he's going to make use of the time that white spends playing knight a3, and knight takes b5 to create some definite uh, threats in the white camp. And we'll see what those are momentarily. First of all, you gotta get castled, so Fabi does so. White does capture this pawn. And now, if you'll notice, these two pieces have been developed a little bit awkwardly. So if you can spot the way to take advantage of it, uh, kudos to you. Uh, you've uh, navigated your way through the opening well, I suppose. The way to take advantage of it is to play bishop g4. Of course, the standard ways of dealing with this pin are to play a move like knight d2, defending this knight, or a move like bishop e2, defending this knight and breaking the pin. Of course, neither of those moves are really playable here, because we've brought both of these pieces out to the queen's side. And really because of this, uh, this pin is going to be very, very annoying for white to deal with. And this is the main source of compensation that black really gets from this opening line. In the game, white tried rook e1. And in this case, Fabi actually goes ahead and captures this knight on f3. Uh, of course, if you play queen takes f3, you're going to run into e takes d4 and knight takes d4. When black has regained the pawn and you have some extra pressure against this b2 square. Uh, so instead of queen f3, white tries to hold on to the pawn for a little bit with g takes f3. Uh, now, of course, the problem with taking back with this pawn is that you weaken a ton of squares around the king's side. Not only is your king weak, but a very key square in the Roy Lopez has been weakened. That is, of course, the f4 square. This pawn can no longer come to g3, so black is going to try to make use of it with this knight by playing knight h5. And now, uh, historically here, white has usually just played king h1, tried to hold on to this extra pawn for a little bit. The game sometimes continues with like queen f6, rook g1, this knight jumps into f4, this bishop comes to e3, and you just let this knight stand for a little bit. And this knight does give, uh, give black some very nice compensation. In fact, we see another knight actually reroute to the king's side. And the game kind of continues like this, with white holding onto this extra pawn, and black looking to use this compensation uh, to create some threats on the king's side. In this case, though, uh, Kovalev uh, actually came up with a pretty interesting idea. It's been tried a couple times but uh, not to much success, really, which is why it's interesting you chose to play it here. He plays the move f4. Now, this move opens up the queen uh, to attacking this knight, and it kind of forces black to move this knight to f4 before he's fully prepared to do so. Of course, in the previous line, we saw black bring the queen out first to support this knight on f4, but now we have to bring it to f4 immediately. And white takes this opportunity to actually capture 
And after e takes f4, white is claiming he's got a nice uh, pawn center, and this pawn has been diverted to the king's side, where it really doesn't want to be. And in exchange for all this, he had to give back this doubled f pawn. So material uh, equality has actually been achieved, but white is claiming his center is worth it. But we'll see here, Fabi actually does a very, very good job of proving that this center can actually be attacked. Uh, he does this pretty naturally. White plays king h1, stepping out of any ideas of being forked. Black plays knight e7, rerouting this knight to the g6 square before too long. Bishop c2, we do in fact see knight g6. And now, there's some pressure on this b file that was making white a little bit concerned. It's probably why he played bishop c2 as well. And to deal with it, uh, black chose to play b4. And I'm not sure I'm actually in love with this move. And you'll see why in just a moment. First, Fabi starts with c6, bringing this knight back to a3. And now the key break here for Fabi to really prove the weaknesses in the white camp is this move that he plays right now. First, he played c6 to kick this knight away, but now he plays c5. And this is the, really the key move. This is the move that opens up all of black's pieces. This bishop was stuck looking at this pawn. This rook was stuck looking at this pawn both of which are adequately defended by the c3 pawn. And this knight, which would love to jump into e5, is also being stopped by this pawn. In this move, c5 is challenging all three of these things. Unless white finds some way to maintain the balance here, to keep these pawns on b4 and d4, all three of these black pieces are going to spring to life. And it's going to be very difficult for white to deal with it. In the game, uh, White didn't choose the most accurate way to continue. In fact, he took on c5, which is a little bit of a mistake. So now after d takes c5, the queen is also added as pressure on d4, and it becomes simply too much for the white pieces to handle. Knight c4 was White's choice, so after c takes d4, uh, White does get to take off one of these black pieces, but now after c takes d4, we see this very annoying move, rook d6. And this is why uh, Fabi actually has a very, very annoying advantage in this position. Uh, it looks as though white simply has a much favorable pawn structure. These two pawns in the center support each other quite nicely. And, uh, you know, if black isn't careful, maybe this pawn rolls down the board sometimes. But the fact is, this structure is actually too weak to, to stand. White cannot maintain both of these pawns in the center. And of course, it'd be a huge mistake to play a move like d5. The reason being, this bishop's going to be terrible on c2. Stuck behind these two pawns, and of course, d5, this knight is very happy to jump into this e5 square. And this is simply going to be a, a horribly painful endgame to have to play with white. In fact, it might just be technically losing, and practically, this is almost unholdable. You just have to play so passively, and black can do whatever he wants on the king's side, bring the pieces around through the queen's side, it's going to be awful. Nobody wants to play chess like this. Uh, so in the game, white tried to hold on to this pawn a little bit, but Fabi found a very, very nice resource to uh, maintain the threats to d4. Now I will say, if Fabi had wasted some time here, played a move like h6, white is simply much better. The reason being, he has this move, e5. This move opens up the bishop and actually does make use of the center quite effectively. With this bishop hitting this knight, this queen can come in uh, to support the attack as well. This pawn threatens to come to e6 to break open the light squares, and white is simply crushing. So what black needs to do is find some way to prevent this pawn from coming to e5 and to increase the pressure to d4. If you want to pause the video at home to try to find it, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay, here's the answer. It is knight e5. Of course, my favorite way to prevent moves in chess is to make them illegal. Knight e5 makes e5 highly illegal, so it's highly unlikely that Kovalev would try to play it here. Of course, this move takes advantage of the pin on the d-pawn, uh, with this rook hitting the white queen. White continues with f3, and now the second point of, White's, er, of, of Fabi's play is to play knight c6, increasing the pressure on d4. There's simply no way to defend this pawn anymore, so White has to make a decision. He can either play d5 and go in for this awful-looking endgame that we just talked about, or you can play the movie played in the game, e5, giving up this pawn in exchange for opening up this bishop. But the fact is, it's simply not enough here. The extra pawn is very good for Fabi, which we'll see. Queen h4, a nice idea to unpin by putting pressure to this e1 rook. We see rook g1, 
This rook comes to d8 now, hitting this queen. So the queen comes to f1. Simply g6 for Fabi. Now after rook g4, queen e7, rook f4, queen takes e5. And uh, it, it's very, very clear that, that Fabi is technically winning here. Rook h4 is his idea, but this king is simply too weak, this knight is too active, and this rook is, is too close to getting into the game. We see knight e6 come onto the board, this rook drops back to h3, but now this knight comes into f4, and this rook comes into d2. And uh, white actually went ahead and, and resigned this position. There's simply way too many threats to deal with. For example, queen d4 and rook d1 is a threat, queen b2 and rook h2 is a threat, Queen h5 and queen h2 is a threat. Way too many threats. White can't uh, stop all of them. So Kovalev went ahead and resigned here. And like I said, this was a very impressive game from Fabi. Uh, really from the opening, uh, Fabi had the advantage after f4, and he never really let up. Uh, proving why he's a world-class player, one of the best of all time, uh, playing perfect games of chess like this. Uh, who can really doubt his abilities these days? Uh, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and I will see you next time.